Okay, so we're going to uh, continue our look at files in Moodle 2.2. So uh, now we're in a scenario where you don't want to just upload one file. Say you have a say you have a lot of files that you need to get into Moodle, and you it could be a hundred files, and you don't want to go one by one. Um, it could also be that you have some kind of structured content where you want a lot of folders to go in and you don't have to recreate all of these folders and file structure at the same time. Most of the time it's just you have a lot of files or PowerPoints or whatever that you, you know, documents that you just want to put up there at one time. You don't want to go through the whole thing of, of uploading them one by one. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, and add in a block. So if we, if we look down here on the right hand side, you'll notice that um, we can go at oops we have to turn editing on so we're going to turn editing on then we are going to scroll down and we go to add a block so we're going to uh, go into the add a block uh, drop down here and select uh, my private files okay now the reason why we're using the my private files uh, block is because the private files don't necessarily go along with the course. So let's say that I upload a hundred documents, but I only end up using ten of them in the course. Well, when you try to duplicate the course, say that you're going to be using this course for a lot of different users, that those files wouldn't go along with the course. So anything in your private files is not going to be duplicated with the course, uh, which is important to note. Um, so even though they're here, once we start to use them in the course, Moodle will automatically move them over and automatically save them in a different location. Uh, but it's a great place to store things while you're working. So we're going to go to manage my private files. Okay, so remember our scenario is that we're uploading lots of documents at one time. So let's go get those documents ready. Okay, so we are in, um, and I already did it earlier, so I'm just going to delete what I did. Um, okay, so we are in uh, Windows Explorer here. We have a situation where we have like five documents. The very first thing I'm going to do is right click, new, whoops, So I'm going to right-click, New, and then I'm going to com go to Compressed Folder. Okay, so I right-clicked in a blank section of the doc of the folder, New Compressed Folder. I'm going to call this Authoring Documents. Okay, now what I've done is I've created what's what Windows calls a compressed folder. So a compressed folder is what in general computing you'd call a zip file. Okay, it's just a type of file that holds other files. Right? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, select, click and drag to select all the files that I want to add to my zip file. That's all the files that I want to upload at one time. I drag and drop them into the zip file. It doesn't look like anything happened but I can double check so I double click the zip file and notice that Windows treats this zip file as what it's calling a compressed folder. Okay, now it's fairly confusing, but you want to realize that you're in a, in a compressed folder, a zip file, not in a regular folder. Okay. Alright, so I have our zip file. Now we're going to upload the zip file. So I go to, um, to Moodle, to the My Private Files dialog. We click Add, and we're on the Upload tab here in, in the uh, File Picker. Okay, so we go to authoringdocuments.zip. I click upload this file. Okay, so we're still waiting for it to upload. Uh, it does take a little bit, a little while for the zip file to upload.
Okay, so there we have it. So the zip file has been uploaded. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we we can actually unzip it now on the server. So the zip file is on the server. We're going to unzip it into its own into its component file. So we're going to click on it, click unzip. Okay, so what happened here is because there was just files inside of the zip folder, notice now that we have the zip folder and all of the component files are now there on the server. Okay, so now I can go ahead, I can delete the zip file. Okay, so now I have all of these files on the, on the server. Okay, now let's say that I want to, um, I want to move them all into a folder. Okay, so I could create a folder, let's call it authoring documents. Now I could have created a folder and then zipped that folder and it would have created the folder for me automatically but I can do it just as easily on the server. Let's say that I want to um, I want to move this to authoring documents. Up. Okay, so I can move them all one at a time. Notice this is pretty slow. Uh, I, to be honest, if I was doing this again, um, I would put these all into a single folder in the zip file. Um, okay, so let's say, so I'm slowly moving them one at a time into this um, other folder, and I'm sure there's a quicker way to do this, but it's not part of our video today. Okay, so I'm going to go. The interesting thing about the um, the private files is this: you can make a lot of changes in here, and they look like they're permanent, but they are not. What you must do at the very end, when you've made all the changes that you want, you must click Save Changes. Okay, and that commits all the changes in the file system. Otherwise, your changes will be lost when you leave the um, the <coughs> page. Okay, now let's take a look at a couple different ways that we can use these files inside of my private files. Um, so now I'm back on the main course page. Let's say I want to add a resource, uh, which is a folder. Okay, so I don't want to. Uh, let's say that I don't want to clutter up my main course page with lots and lots of links to individual files. Let's say I just want to put one link that's going to open up a, a large list of of files. So I can click Add a Resource. Oops, I'm going to expand the page here. Okay, so we're going to click Add Resource, and we're going to click Folder, and we're going to call it Authoring Documents, Documents to help authors create courses. Okay, we're going to go ahead and scroll down. Okay, and I'm going to click Add. And notice in my file picker what I can do is I can go to Private Files. Okay, now what this is going to do Okay, so what this is going to do is this is going to create a folder um, that I can then put things into. So let's go ahead and, and what I'm doing right now is I'm creating, I'm adding files into this new folder that I'm creating. So what I can do is I can go to private files. Let's say that I want to add um, just one after another. Okay, so I can add quite a few files, as many as I want. Okay, so in this case I'm just adding the same private files that I added to that I added to my um, that I added earlier via the zip file. Okay, now the interesting thing about this is that as I add these in, they're being moved. Well, they're not moved yet, but but I'm adding in links to the private files, but they're they're being added into the course files. And the difference is this: when I try to move the course 
or when I try to duplicate the course, the course files will go along with the course, the private files will not. So um, let me show you why it's a little bit different. Okay, so I add all my files into the um, folder that I'm creating. I click Save and Return to Course. Okay, so now we have authoring document. Oop, let's say I want to make it documents, but let's see what happens when I actually click it. And let's and this is what the student would see. So if I click it, basically what I get is I get this um, the name of the folder, and then I get links to all of the files here. Okay, so let's let's take a look at how um, let's take a look at how the um, private files now have been moved over. So let's say that I go into my private files now. And we're going to go manage private files. Okay, and I go in, and let's say I want to delete all of these uh, files now. So let's say I go in and I want to delete every single one of these files. Okay. So all these files have now been deleted. Now you would think that that would break the links or something else in in all of the places that I've used these files, but that is not the case. So what has happened is that basically Moodle has moved these documents from my private files into the course files, and even though I've deleted them in my private files, the links will still work. So notice that it's actually moved them into the course files automatically. Okay, so for this reason, it's really great to, to upload that zip file into your private files and then use those private files inside of the course. Um, you could, of course, use, um, now that they're in the course, of course, you can they'll be available for you in other places. Um, okay, so in this video, we talked about uploading um, massive numbers of files to Moodle. Uh, using your private files area to kind of screen which files actually get added to the course and then um, using those private files inside of the course and how it's very safe to do so uh, because even if you were to delete your private files later on uh, the, the documents would still be available as course files. Uh, great, good luck.